delicious little patties of fried dough, burgers with a crazy name, a chili treat for hot days at the beach. Here are just a few Hawaiian treats you should try. To those unfamiliar with kava, its color might be a little off-putting. It looks more like muddy water than anything else. But there's something to be said for that old saying of not judging a book by its cover. Kava is a root drink made from a plant that's native to most of Oceania and that has a large role in oceanic culture. The name of this drink comes from a Polynesian word that means bitter, which refers to the drink's less-than-sweet taste. So make sure you sip it slowly. Kava has a natural numbing effect that's been said to relieve stress and anxiety. It was traditionally served at special ceremonies, and sharing a bowl has had an important social connotation in Hawaiian culture for a long time. It still persists as a social drink, and it's not uncommon to pour it into a halved coconut shell from a large wooden bowl and kick back with a few friends. There's a significant Portuguese influence on Hawaiian cuisine, which is most apparent in malasadas, a small and sweet fried dough. Back in the 19th century, Portuguese laborers came to Hawaii to work on plantations, and with them came their culinary traditions. Malasadas always come coated in sugar, sometimes even in a mouth-watering cinnamon sugar blend. The word malasada roughly translates to poorly cooked, which probably refers to the snack's crispy exterior and soft and doughy interior. Hawaiian malasadas differ from the traditional Portuguese variety in that they're smaller and rounder and have a mild aroma and mild taste. Nowadays, more experimental malasadas can also be found in an array of flavors. But no matter how they're prepared, they make a great snack on the go or as a side with a cup of joe. It's a great, um, I don't know how to describe it. It's Pastry. great. It's flavorful. Different. Yeah, it's different. Another grain-based treat, Hawaiian sweetbread surely takes the cake. Perhaps you're already familiar with the brand King's Hawaiian, a staple among many grocery stores. But there's plenty more to know about this traditional baked good. Hawaiian sweetbread is a sort of fusion between Filipino, Portuguese, and Hawaiian cuisine. This is a fluffy, light bread with, predictably enough, a notably sweet taste. There are many different sweetbread recipes out there, but the consensus is that it should be made from sugar, honey, and yeast with a slight citrus twist. You can find sweetbread served with breakfast, at luau's, or as a sandwich. If you want some sweetbread baked right in Hawaii, the Punalu'u Bake Shop offers express shipping in a variety of flavors. Locomoco is a thoroughly Hawaiian quick bite. It consists of a hamburger patty on rice topped with egg, doused in gravy, and finished with green onions. What really defines the flavor is the onion, with both green and sautéed onions. This savory dish is paired best with a cup of fresh black coffee or a good beer. Loco Moco was reportedly first conceived after World War II to satisfy hungry teenagers who were looking for an easy breakfast. But this heavy hitter of a dish can be enjoyed at any time of the day, though do be prepared for the food coma that comes after. Lapse into a food coma. I've had issues with food in the past. Beer might not be the first thing that comes to mind when talking about Hawaiian cuisine, but Kona Brewing Company is a great way to enjoy a taste of the islands. It thoroughly explores the area with its brews that utilize local flavors. Notes of pineapple, mango, guava, a rare honey, and Kona coffee are just some of their regional flavors. Overall, Kona creates a tasty microbrew with a decidedly Hawaiian approach. The packaging is also noteworthy, as Kona brews are served in some pretty bottles that are wrapped with labels that are as one-of-a-kind as the drinks they carry. It's possible to obtain Kona outside of Hawaii, although Keep in mind that if you're drinking it in the lower 48, it was most likely brewed outside the islands. So to truly enjoy this Hawaiian-born beer, you'll need to actually visit Hawaii. Poi is a uniquely Hawaiian food with a decidedly spiritual element. It's said to be made from Halua, a descendant of the sky god and, according to legend, the first Hawaiian. So this dish has been a major part of Hawaiian culture literally since the beginning, made by mashing taro root and then diluting it to the heart's delight. This traditional side has a creamy lavender complexion. There's no one consistency to poi, but rather a system. It's made with the finger method – one finger, two fingers, or three fingers, depending on how many are needed to scoop it. 
Poi is a relatively mild treat, and it's served one of two ways, sweet or sour. Sweet poi is freshly made and is usually topped with honey or sugar to sweeten it up a bit more. Sour poi, on the other hand, is left to ferment for a few days and has a fair amount of vitamins. It pairs nicely with meats and other savory dishes. Whether sweet or sour, this is a dish that delights. Is there any better place than Hawaii to enjoy an icy treat? According to a New York Times investigation, shave ice's origins can be traced back to colonization. Settlers didn't want to forego the comfort of ice on the island, and Japanese immigrants specifically were accustomed to a very popular ice dessert. By the beginning of the 20th century, shave ice had made its landing. It's not hard to see why it's remained popular. After all, how can you resist scoops of snowflake-like ice that it's powdery light, but packed enough to hold flavorful syrup without melting into a disgusting, sticky puddle. If you're particularly indulgent, you can finish this treat off with red Otsuki beans or a scoop of ice cream. Or maybe both. One legendary Shave Ice fan is none other than Hawaiian-born former President Barack Obama. He even has his own namesake concoction, the Snowbama, which consists of lemon-lime, cherry, and passion guava syrup. No matter the circumstances, I am going to keep it cool. A luau staple, Kalua Pig is a savory, slow-roasted dish that utilizes a traditional style of cooking to achieve a one-of-a-kind flavor. Kalua refers to the method used to cook the pig. Traditionally, the entire animal is cooked for this dish, and that cooking happens underground in a hand-dug pit. The pit's bonfire uses porous lava rocks to make for a breezier fire. The pig is then covered in banana and tea leaves to season, and a few inches of dirt are added to seal in the heat. This results in slow steam that leaves the pork so tender that it just falls off the bone. The pig is then shredded, seasoned, and served. It's frequently accompanied by a few other sides, like poi. If you're a barbecue aficionado, Hawaii is a destination you should absolutely add to your itinerary. There's no clearer example of Hawaiian and Japanese fusion cuisine than the beloved mochi. This traditional Japanese rice dessert can be found all around the islands and even served as a festive treat on Girls' Day, a stateside Japanese tradition. The Girls' Day mochi is a small, three-layered confection with pink, white, and green layers. The pink symbolizes energy and new blossoms, the white symbolizes purity, and the green symbolizes young leaves, energy, and family. Hawaiian mochi Mochi is unique thanks to its particular flavors. Taro and guava are just a couple of sweet confections that pair nicely with their surroundings. Butter mochi, also unique to Hawaii, makes for a bold footprint in the dessert scene. Its rich combination of butter and coconut milk offers an unmistakable tropical variant of mochi. And in the ever-shifting food landscape, the only thing you can ever count on is change. If you want a more modern, plant-based take on this treat, why not try an Ulu Spice Vegan Butter Mochi? When talking about sweet potatoes, a bright orange is probably the color that comes to mind. But in the seemingly infinite potato family, there are many different ways to have a sweet treat, such as a purple sweet potato, which has flourished in the soils of Hawaii for a very long time. Purple sweet potatoes have the same antioxidants that give the likes of raspberries, blackberries, and eggplant their vibrant, deep shades. The particular main antioxidant in purple sweet potatoes is anthocyanin, which has been found to combat inflammation and boost cancer defense. According to WebMD, one purple sweet potato has about three times as many anthocyanins as a blueberry. Purple sweet potatoes are a bit sweeter and more complex in flavor than their orange cousins. They're just as versatile, though, and they can be found in any number of ways on the table, from mashed to baked into a sweet dessert. It tastes healthy and good at the same time. A melting pot all in a soup bowl, Simon represents the complexity of contemporary Hawaiian cuisine. The name actually originates from Chinese and roughly translates to thin noodles. Simon noodles are somewhat similar to ramen, though they're thinner, darker, and bolder in flavor. They're served in a clear shrimp-based broth and garnished with egg, slices of spam, a Chinese barbecue pork called char siu, and a Japanese fish cake called kamaboka. This is, to put it simply, not a light dish. 
Simon has persisted throughout the years and can be found in just about any sort of dining setting, dressed as up or down as need be. You can even find it on the McDonald's menu at their Hawaii location. Beyond the Golden Arches, Simon has earned accolades from prestigious American Culinary Awards, as well as one particularly positive notice from Hawaiian-born chef Mark Noguchi, who once told the late Anthony Bourdain, "'Ramen is trendy, Simon is life." And one dish that we make 24-7, 365 days a year, is Simon. A large part of Hawaiian cuisine, of course, consists of seafood. While seafood is usually served cooked or raw, squid luau is an interesting exception. It's a heavier stew-like dish that is as filling as it looks. You would probably assume that a dish called squid luau would require squid. And while it is traditionally prepared that way, it can often be substituted with octopus or other meats. No matter what protein you opt for, it's imperative to prepare this dish with taro leaves and coconut milk. This chilled, thick soup may not be the main attraction at a luau, but it's certainly a welcome side. At first glance, squid luau might look like an off-putting puree, but those who are willing to dig in and chow down will be satisfied by a real hearty treat. In one family recipe shared on the Delishably blog, stewing the ingredients together is what really gives squid luau an amazing flavor that is simultaneously salty, sweet, and creamy. Another tip worth remembering is that when cooking squid luau, you can boil taro leaves with a bit of baking soda to help the leaves retain their green color. As a sweet finish to this selection of Hawaiian cuisine, we present halpia, a quintessentially Hawaiian coconut dessert. Halpia sort of exists between extremes, as it should be neither too soft nor too firm. Making it is not a complex undertaking. It only consists of four ingredients — coconut milk, sugar, cornstarch, and water. It takes just about 15 minutes to make and two hours to cool. This pudding-like snack is a bold white color, always served chilled and often cut into small rectangles or as a custard when on the table. It's not uncommon to find halpia served alongside savory dishes, as it can act as a very sweet palate cleanser. You can probably think it's mild sweetness for the fact that it's very versatile among desserts, as it pairs very nicely with the purple sweet potato, for example. Halpia can be found as a sort of meringue on chocolate pies, served fried at McDonald's, and even as gourmet ice cream. Any way you slice it, the eating is good. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more mashed videos about your favorite delicacies are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.